Hi there, this is a tutorial on how to put text around an ellipse uh, in Inkscape. Now a lot of people seem to be asking for this, so I'm going to show you my method to achieve something just like this. So let's get over to a blank area in the canvas, and let's press T on the keyboard to bring up the text tool and type above. Now I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to click again while still in, in the text tool, and I'm going to type below. And I'll hit escape twice here to bring up my select tool. So I'm just going to move that down a little bit, give myself a little bit more separation. Now we're going to go to the ellipse tool. We're going to draw an ellipse out. Oh, so I was already playing around, so my ellipse looks a little weird. I'm just going to reset it so it looks like an ellipse like you're most likely to see. So something like this. Now what we want to do is we want to get to the select tool. So I'm going to hit spacebar to bring that up. And I'm going to shift click on the text that I want on the top. And I'm going to go to text, put on path. And I'm just actually drag this text right out of the way for now. So you can see the text has now wrapped itself around this oval, but not nearly where we want it to be. So we need to manipulate this oval a little bit to get this text where we need it to be. Uh, what I should have done actually is I should have duplicated this ellipse first. So I'm going to just click on it. I'm going to hit control D to duplicate that. And I'm just going to use shift and the down arrow on my keyboard to get that down and out of the way. Now I'm using shift and the down arrow so I can move it down a very specific distance so I can bring it back right up to where it was before. And I'm just gonna give that a different color. So I'm gonna make that orange and I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna make this uh, maybe a blue color, even though we're not gonna work with that right away. Okay, so back to our original text, what we want above the, uh, the oval here. What I need to do is I need to go back into my oval tool or my ellipse tool. So I will just, uh, I can click over here on the toolbar to bring that up, or I can simply double click that. Uh, when I'm in my ellipse tool, as I am now, you can see there on the right-hand side at the midpoint, there's this little white circle, and when you hover over it, it goes red. I'm just going to click that and drag that up slightly, and you see it starts making this Pac-Man shape. Now what I'm doing there is controlling the start and end point of this ellipse, so I'm going to click the lower circle, and I'm going to drag it all the way down around to the left-hand side until it's roughly in line horizontally with that circle over on the right-hand side. So something like that looks good to me. That nicely centers my text above that oval, so I'd call that good. I'm going to go back to my select tool. I'm going to click on this orange oval at the bottom there. I'm going to use again the shift and the up arrow key to bring that back right in place with that original oval. So just like that, nicely positioned exactly where we want it. And now I need to work on getting this text below the oval. So I will shift click on the below text. Again, I'll go to the text menu. I'll go to put on path. And again, it puts it in this really kind of an awkward spot. Um, what you might already notice is that if I was to simply do what I did before with the above text, my below text would be right on the top again. So that wouldn't really work for us. What we need to do is just click off in a blank area to deselect everything. Click on to this oval. We need to go and flip that. I'm just going to flip it horizontally. And now what it's done is actually put my text inside this oval. Uh, you can't see it because the oval is on top. So I'm going to move that down in the stacking order. I'm going to move it right down to the bottom. And so now you can see my text in there and it's all scrunched up, not looking good. So again, I'm going to go back into the ellipse tool. I'm going to do that by double clicking on this orange oval. And now my, my handles are over on the right hand side. So I'm just going to click one and drag it up slightly. And then I'm going to take the other one and I'm going to drag it around. Oh, I think I'm going the wrong way. So I need this handle over here on the left. I need this handle to come over here to the right. There we go. And again, I'm going to drag it so it's roughly hor horizontal according to that bounding box top line there. So that looks close to what we want. The below is following the curve of that ellipse. Now what we need to do is we need to move this text down. Uh, you could simply go to your select tool and press spacebar to get into my select tool. You could click on the below and you could just you know click on it and drag it down while holding alt. That would keep it constrained in the vertical direction. I don't think this is necessarily the best. You see it gives me a little bit of a Oh, I'm going to redo that. Um, let me try that one more time. It leaves me this little gap, so it's not following this line exactly. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to show you a way that I would do it. I would go to my text tool. So again, T on the keyboard. Click in the text, and I just control A to select all. Now I'm going to use Alt and the down arrow. And what that's going to do is it's going to nudge my text down on the baseline. And if I hold down Shift as well as Alt, it's going to move it down a lot quicker. So I'm going to get it pretty much right there. And now you can see the curvature of the text is a lot at the top of the text is actually a lot closer to following that oval. 
So that looks good to me. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that text tool. I'm going to hit escape one more time to come back to my select tool. And there we go. Uh, we have pretty much as I showed you at the example at the beginning of the video, except I had a solid oval in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on one of these. I'm going to press control D to duplicate that. I'm going to double click on it to get back to my oval tool. And I'm simply going to click this uh, button here. What this is going to do is just make it a whole ellipse again. So there we go. I could give that a color and pretty much like the, the object or the, the design I had at the beginning of this video. You can pretty much quit right there if you're happy with that and you're leaving your design in Inkscape. But if you are going to be importing this into another program, you might need to go one step further. You might need to convert this text to a path so that it will actually import into another program properly. Right now it's an Inkscape text object. Uh, you'll see if I click on it, it says text down here in the status bar. And it's also a text object that is wrapped around an oval. Uh, another program is probably not going to understand all of those commands and it's going to be a mess or it's not going to import at all. So what we would want to do is we want to just go control shift C or we could go up to the path menu and convert that object to a path. So if I click on that, it doesn't look a whole lot different, but if you look down in the status bar, it now says it's a group of five objects. So those five objects are each of the individual characters in this word. What I would do even further is I would use uh, I would the ungroup command, control shift G to ungroup those. And then I would use control plus to union them together. And now I have just one path object. Uh, it should be, you should be able to import that into pretty much any program now. It's kind of a universal thing. And you would want to do that with the, the below word here. So let's just do that. Um, actually, no, before I do that, I'm going to do one thing real quick. I'm just going to drag this orange oval off the top and I'm going to show you what would happen if you don't convert it and you do happen to delete this oval that we've got here, which is the guide for this text. So if I just simply delete that, you'll see that our text goes back to being just a simple, normal, straightforward text object. Uh, in a straight line, it lost its curvature. So control Z to undo that. Control Z one more time. Waiting for Inkscape to catch up. Let's Waiting, waiting, waiting for Inkscape to catch up. My computer really doesn't like uh, Inkscape and my screen recording software at the same time. But there we are, mostly. Well, close enough for me. I'm going to try to just select this. Inkscape can get a little glitchy at times. I'm just going to Control Shift C to make that a, a path. And it's thinking, it's converting. And now it's a group of five objects again. I'm going to control shift G to ungroup that control plus to union it could go even one step further and hold down shift and click on the above and control plus to union that and let's even incorporate this oval into the mix. So I'll shift click on that and I'll control plus to union those all the text and that oval. You see everything's going to be the same color in a moment here when Inkscape is done computing. Oh, come on, here we go. Everything is now pink. And it is now one big path object, so I could just click that, drag that around. And that pretty much concludes the tutorial uh, just in time because nothing good is happening here. Anyways, hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.